It may look like a basic old Ford Fairlane, but this one was so hot, it came with a warning letter. We tend to think of new cars having warranties and being ready for use, but when this car was new, Ford included a warning letter to the new owner saying that this was not intended for highway use or even general passenger car use. The mid-1960s saw lightweight galaxies racing in superstock, aerodynamic galaxies competing on NASCAR super speedways, Shelby Cobras and GT350s winning on road race tracks, and no one can ever forget the historic 1-2-3 win at the 1966 Le Mans, where Ford GT40s beat Ferrari on the world stage. That racing technology truly trickled down to the streets, directly resulting in our 1967 Fairlane 500 feature car, an average guy version of an NHRA superstock drag car for the street. The Fairlane is a mid-sized car, bigger than the Falcon, but not as heavy as the Galaxy. Their accommodating under-hood space allowed for the installation of any of the Ford V8s of the day, and less than 229 ended up like this one, stuffed with the notorious R-Code 427. It's the drivetrain that's so special on these cars. Starting with the 427 cubic inch FE series engine, a thin wall, high compression, tight tolerance racing V8 topped with two four barrel carburetors perched on a medium rise intake manifold, high flow cylinder heads, high compression pistons, a solid lifter camshaft, and free flowing exhaust manifolds. The factory tune claimed 425 horsepower and 480 pound feet of torque. And this one is hooked to a heavy-duty clutch and a four-speed manual transmission. And a stout 9-inch rear end is loaded with 389-to-1 rear gears. Dealers provided buyers of these cars with a warning letter claiming that they needed to be careful of decreased fuel economy and increased oil consumption and poor low-speed performance because this was, after all, a racing V8 engine. When I was a kid, I remember that our neighbor had a car very similar to this. It was the same color, except it only had a 390 instead of the 427. But I'll never forget having a big wheel's eye view of the back side of the car and how the exhaust rumble nearly blew me off my big wheel. Well, today, this whole car blows me off my big wheel. The stacked headlights and pronounced grille are popular styling language for the time, and it still looks great today. We dig the red, white, and blue crest in the grille. The headlights suggestively lean forward, giving a speedy appearance, and the sloping rear roof line makes for a slick profile. Painted steel wheels topped with dog dish caps and white pinstripe tires add to that classy look, and the lower side trim well, it almost looks stripe-ish, but this car is devoid of anything that suggests its performance capabilities, except for that sneaky little 427 badge on the fender. Interior styling is the definition of clean, with acres of blue vinyl to match the outside, only interrupted by the occasional slab of wood grain door trim and chrome dash trim. And this car has an interesting red line on the speedometer, warning that you've crossed the 70 mile per hour mark, but it seems strange that there is no tachometer. Heater controls are tucked in below the AM radio, and the four speed stick pops up through the floor without the need for a console to pretty things up. Bench seat four-speed cars are all business. This is one of the nicest examples of an R-Code 1967 Ford Fairlane, and it's wearing most of its original Brittany blue paint. And it drives and runs like new. Thanks for hanging out with us as we bring cool cars like this from the Brothers Collection. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you get the next show delivered automatically for Muscle Car of the Week.